What do we have here, YouTube? We have some of these whew, cardinal cherries since 1950. I'm doing a candy review right quick. Make that the last video for the evening. Now I'm not going to eat the whole box in one sitting, that would be insane, however, you could do a review on, on some of the candy here, get that plastic off, American made quality confections, cardinal cherries, artificially flavored, made with real milk chocolate. Ooh. All the things in life they say, oh, it's bad for you. This would definitely be one of those things. <laughs> you take one bite of this and you're going to feel guilty eating it, but I guarantee you that this is some damn good candy. All right, so we pull it out of the box here and it comes in a little a little tray like that you ran out of chocolate covered cherries if you haven't you're missing out mm. Mm -hmm. here's the cross section you see half the cherry and all that candy goo in the middle <laughs> there are some things in this world that are bad for you this being one of them but as long as you don't get carried away with eating them you should be fine every once in a while it's good to indulge in some delicious chocolate live life a little you know Oh man, cardinal cherries are delicious. You have no idea. I don't care if you're eating Queen Anne's, Zachary's. It don't matter the brand. As long as you're eating chocolate covered cherries, man. And they got the, the fancy design. I just got done eating some hot sauce Doritos and some Doritos Flames snacking and my tongue's a little burnt from the spiciness of it so I'm cooling it off with some of these and chocolate covered cherries are delicious you have no idea mm. How many is that? Three? No. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, I suppose I could eat one more for you two. Why not? What if I ate the whole box for you two? Would that be nuts? A little nuts. Yeah. It's a beautiful cross section right there. You know, even though my fingers are stained with Doritos, I don't care. You take a look at that cross section of that beautiful chocolate. Mm. This is the kind of thing, uh, let's say it's Valentine's Day and you got a girlfriend and you want to do something extra special, 
you get a glass, a champagne glass, and you put um, some of that chocolate that freezes around the rim of it and freeze it. And then when you take the frozen glass out with the chocolate on the rim, you get some crushed ice and some sugar-coated strawberries and a Queen Anne or a Zachary, whatever it may be. You grab a chocolate-covered cherry and drop it in the glass next to the sugar-coated strawberry and uh, the crushed ice. Your girlfriend comes in, you pop open that pink champagne, and there you go. You pour that in the glass. Yeah. <laughs> because chocolate covered cherries are that good this is something it definitely has an iconic taste there's definitely no mistaking a chocolate covered cherry that's just you know cardinal cherries are where it's at mmm that's a beautiful cross section too. What the hell would you call that? Drink combinations, right? <laughs> Taking a champagne glass, rimming it with with um that one chocolate that you put on ice cream. When it gets cold, it freezes, and you can like you know, mm. yeah. Call it a sweetheart drink combination. That's what I call it. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> and of course, if you do have a girlfriend on Valentine's Day, she's probably not going to expect that. Like, what's this dude doing? He's got these champagne glasses coated in frozen chocolate. Crushed ice, sugar coated strawberries. He's dropping chocolate covered cherries in there. And he drops some of that pink champagne on top. There's a Valentine's Day martini that'll knock your socks off. <laughs> I seriously cannot believe I ate this entire box in one sitting. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna feel disgusting after eating it all in one sitting, but at the same time, not really because it's cardinal covered cherries. I mean, one of those oh, I'm so bad foods. You know, that's that's how it is. YouTube, you already know. Eating this entire box just for your sick entertainment. This is not something I'd normally do because the amount of calories and sugar and ooey. Yeah, no. But just for entertainment purposes. I made a small section of it off so you could see that cross section. If this video makes you want cardinal covered cherries, then I've done my job. Mm. Nothing wrong with a little bit of free advertising. Mm. Since 1950, huh? I see why they've been in business for that long. If all their other candy is as good as this one is, I can definitely see why this company's been in business since 1950. Mm. Go ahead and um, dispose of this. I'm not even bullshitting on YouTube. This is the kind of crazy shit that I do for entertainment purposes. Look at that, the whole thing gone. Oof, good lord. That's definitely something I would not recommend doing. I mean, you have a massive sugar high, you'll be feeling really good for a minute, and then when you crash, you're gonna be going, Whoa. No, but 
on the real note though, these get the seal of approval. If you have not had a cardinal cherry, you're missing out. If you have never had a cardinal chocolate covered cherry, what are you doing with your life? Ding. There's a little circle right there in the bottom. That's going to come in handy much later. The first step we're going to do is add some water to it. I mean, a candy review, Pfft. that's all right, but where's the entertainment in that? Next, for this video, I wanna show you how to make delicious coffee out of an old school percolator. This percolator is three generations old and still makes good coffee. Step one, make sure it's cleaned out, rinse it out with some water, fill it up to underneath the spout, just barely. And we're going to go ahead and set that down right there. <clears throat> now you're going to have your assembly, which goes in the middle of your percolator. And the reason why you should opt for using a percolator when making coffee is you'll get more coffee. You might have to wait longer. A Keurig will only make one cup of coffee. This, however, will make several cups. This little thing right here sits in the middle. Before that goes in the middle, we need to fill it up with coffee. How do you do that? This is where a lot of people get, might get confused. You take this container right here, and then in the middle right there is where your coffee grounds are going to go. I like to take, if I get a container of Folgers Black Silk, and then a third of it's almost gone, and then I got a container of something else like Maxwell House or what have you, I'll throw it into the same pot and just mix it all together so it creates a custom blend of coffee grounds. And there's just a wee bit left. That should be enough to make some coffee. I want to grab uh, something to scoop this in, or I just hold it over the lid so I don't get grounds all over the floor. Coffee's got a bitter taste. It's an acquired taste. You may not like it. Some people try coffee and they're like, ew, this tastes gross. But then after they get done drinking it, they're like, whoa, hey, that's why people like drinking it so much. <laughs> that's not really as much as I'd normally put in there. I'd usually fill it up to about, to where that pole in the middle is about that much exposed. But this is all I got, unless I can find more coffee grounds. Hold on a second. What the bloody hell are these filtered packs? Is they have coffee beans in them? Classic roast. Oh, yes, they do. You get these filtered packs, just like you do with the cure tags, and you're thinking to yourself, well, I like the cure tag flavors, but I don't like using the cure tag machine because they break, and eventually you gotta replace them. I had that problem with uh, one of them, but... Classic roast, huh? I definitely see 
some coffee grounds in there. Let's see what we got. Okay, it's one of these things. It's like a little filter with some coffee grounds in it. You can go ahead and you just tear it open. And then pour it in there. See when you run out of coffee and you got these like little filtered things like what the f is this and then same concept really. The important thing is that if you run out of coffee and all you got is the little cure take cartridges or these little filtered things and you want to make some coffee it's really not that difficult. Uh, it may not be uh, this would be a life hack YouTube straight up man I'm looking at that like uh, like one more filter will definitely fill it up Who doesn't like a good cup of Folgers Classic Roast? This is a mixture of mostly that. But, uh... Okay, there we go. That's the level I like. Just about, yeah, pretty much. Now you can see it's a lot fuller. That pool's pretty much buried underneath coffee grounds. That's the level I like it at. Now, do you remember that circle I showed you in the bottom of the coffee pot, you two? Oh no, that, that little circle at the bottom is going to come in quite handy as we take the pole, the, that little hole in the bottom, and right, right there like that. And this can be a great way to get your day started. You know, this is, why, this is a good reason why a lot of adults drink coffee because it just... It warms you up in the morning, and it perks you up, gets you ready for your day, you know. Now, if you have successfully put the pole assembly into your percolator, it should just float. And you should be able to, you know, you should feel it floating without it, like, leaning in at an angle. It should be level, nice and straight, like that. And then you take this little piece right here. And you want to put it on top so that the inside groove is facing up. Take your little lid. Boom. Now that you've got the assembly ready to go, the water's filled, the coffee grounds are put in there, you're going to need a heat source. Now, some percolators you heat up on the stove, and that's how you get your coffee. This one, however, plugs into the wall so there's a little outlet right there well this way YouTube I can have some coffee for tomorrow and not have to worry about making it I like one or two cups and then there we go now the first thing you're gonna do is take this end and plug it into that hole right there where those little nubs are right there those connect to the cord right here and push it in there just like that now that's plugged in there this end goes into a power strip or a plug-in outlet what have you Now, 
how do you know your percolator is working as soon as you plug it in and you hear the <laughs> noise that's how you know it's working now the final step YouTube into making this delicious coffee is just to leave it plugged in as soon as it stops percolating unplug it and once you've unplugged it and it stops percolating wait for it to cool off before you take the assembly out and put the top lid right on top and then you can take your assembly dump all the coffee grounds into the trash as they're no longer able to make coffee and you know it's not going to taste as fresh if you use you know but you clean out your assembly after you dump the coffee grounds in the trash after you're done making your pot of, co pot of coffee you literally want to wash it out in the sink rinse it off let it dry and then you want to leave that top lid on your pot on so you don't want to you know what I'm saying you too you don't want to leave your coffee pot full of coffee and you definitely don't want to leave the coffee grounds in there so I like to clean it out the assembly on it as soon as I possibly can and on that note these haters can piss off I'm just saying I drank a beer earlier and this coffee will help with uh, flushing my system a bit so I'm not just you know I disappear off camera right quick. I'm not gonna eh, fuck it, I gotta pee. Oh yes, YouTube, what's good fortune? I found a whole cigarette that hasn't been smoked. Cool, man. Cigarettes are bad for you, says the guy who's smoking them. Right. <laughs> Moderation, though, much like those chocolates, yes. You smoke like four packs a day for like 60 years two to four of course you're gonna you know what i'm saying but um let's see if we can do that trick just right son of a bitch Use a fireball to light a cigarette. Let's see if we can pull this off. This is a brand new lighter, so I don't know why it's doing this shit. Come on, you shack nasty. And eh, fuck it, I'm just gonna light it. That's a hard cigarette trick to pull off, but I've done it a couple times on social media quite successfully. But that fireball just seems to burst from my hand and it lights the end of it. Yeah.
goddamn belt. There we go. Let's see how the paint's doing. How do you like them apples? The paint's dry enough, I can put pump on it. <coughs> Gonna punch the handle a little bit more, why not? There we go, I'm gonna let that punch dry. That's a sweet looking lawn tubes. I like the way that looks. Now once that posh is done drawing, it should be done. Yes, very good, very good. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Finding stuff to do while we wait for the coffee to finish making. And you can still see right here the podge is drying on that 11th wand right there. So once that's done drying, I'll be able to add that to the batch. But these wands are looking real good. Notice when it's dry, it's shiny, see through, and clear. Yeah. This batch of 11 is definitely a nice batch of ones. And why that number? Because you have to be 11 to go to Hogwarts. That's the minimum age requirement. Amen to that. <laughs> go Slytherin. <laughs> so now all I can do now is wait for Glow in the dark one of mine to dry, and then one number 11. Yeah. A lot of people on YouTube are liking the way the copper handles look. And if they sell out quickly, I can always do more. Nothing wrong with using leather for the handles. That does look good. But when I'm seeing other cu customers buying other wands from other wand makers, I see what the other wand makers are doing. Some of them are using copper wire and all kinds of fancy materials. And seeing the competition with the rest of Etsy I'm thinking to myself, I gotta step up my quality a little bit. Now, when you have a business, it's good to not be competitive. Take inspiration from your competition and use it to improve your product. 
don't be intimidated and don't be an ass about it, you know. Considering that I just started selling wands on Etsy for a couple months, I'm not doing too bad. Of course, people who have been on Etsy a lot longer selling wands, of course, they're going to have more sales. You know, that's just how it is. to having a percolator when if you are a coffee drinker the perks to having a percolator you're gonna get more coffee for your time and the chances of it breaking are a lot less a cute take may give you coffee in like two minutes flat or less or more with one cup but this will give you several cups so you don't have to keep because eventually if you want another cup of coffee you gotta wait another two minutes then you know what I'm saying so if you end up drinking like three to four cups in one sitting then the time you spend with the cure take for those three to four cups equals to about what you would spend with a percolator but if you got a cure tag and it works for you, cool. You know, no judgment here, but this is how I make coffee. And it's taking a bit to percolate, but once it's done percolating, <laughs> unplug it. Crank the window. It just rocks slow, yo, for one second, yo. Uh-huh, there we go. Now that we've successfully made our coffee, let's see how it turned out. We plugged it in and stopped percolating. We pour it into the cup and look at that. Houston, we have coffee. Then when you go to clean your assembly out, just take the assembly out and clean it, and then put the lid back on. <clears throat> I'm a bit OCD about keeping this thing functioning like it should, and it functions better when it's clean. So now that's done percolating. I want to take it, the assembly out and I want to clean it off real quick. Although I wait for it to cool off because it's going to be pretty fucking hot when you pull it out, but I'll suck it up. Now that the assembly's out, we have our pot of coffee. Now all these coffee grounds need to be dumped in the trash. So dump them, run this under a faucet, and you're good to go.
Okay, now that I've okay, I missed a spot, but you get the idea. You rinse it out. A little bit right there on the side that I missed, but <clears throat> now that I have washed out the assembly it's clean now let's sit down and enjoy some of that java bean now that the assembly is clean the coffee's been made let's enjoy some of our java bean and you can see it's still pretty hot there's steam coming off of it. Hot cup of coffee on a cold night like tonight. Oh yeah, I definitely hit the spot. It's still pretty hot, so I'm going to sip on it. Yeah, that's good coffee. Hmm. Well, my last video is almost done processing. That's what I like to see. And um, candy review. Yes. Go a pinch of that cherry and leave you with it. Cherry pipe tobacco with those cherry covered chocolates. <sighs> That's a nice uh, combination. If I could invent my own pipe tobacco, specifically a cherry blend, I would try to make pipe tobacco that tasted like chocolate covered cherries and literally smelt like it you know but as far as cherry pipe tobacco goes this is delicious <coughs> courtesy of the ash cigar store check them out downtown casper if you're old enough to purchase tobacco products they have a lovely selection of hookah tobacco cigars and pipe tobacco They also sell pipes. Anyways, tubes. Thanks for watching the coffee and candy review and how to make and what have you. I'll catch you later.